Bible reading number 114. Genesis, the 29th chapter. Okay, we got Sharon on uh, our televisit with us today, again today. Jacob, uh, Jacob's Journey. There's a book called Jacob's Journey that I have at home, and this is Jacob's Journey here. It is a, I think Jacob was one of the most greatest examples of, of Christ in many ways in his uh, life. He always tried to do the right thing. He always tried to do the right thing, and it was obstacles in front of him all the time. Even his birth was an obstacle. The, the ch children were fighting in, the, in their mother's womb. His father didn't love him. <laughs> but his mother did. At least he had 50% of the, the love of his family. And then uh, his brother despised his birthright. He bought his birthright. His father still wanted to give his birthright to his brother. And Rebecca led in deceiving Isaac into thinking he was Esau because he was going to bless their own man. So, I, so Rebecca stood in the gap to bring about the promises of God upon the right man in the right place and the right time. Now, Jacob is on his way to Haran. And he's going to go up there and he's going to meet a trickster up there by the name of Laban or Whitey. Genesis 29 and verse number 1. Then Jacob went on his journey. And he came to the land of the sons of the beasts. This is in the, the, the area of the Fertile Crescent. And he looked and he saw a well in the field. Behold, three flocks of sheep were lying beside it. From, from that well, they, were wa they watered the flocks. The people of the land watered the flocks. Now the stone was on the mouth of the water well was very large. The stone was large. The stone was probably a flat stone and a very large stone, probably weighing somewhere around three or four hundred pounds, approximately guesstimation. And when all the flocks were gathered there, they would then roll the stone from the mouth of the well and the water of the sheep and put the stone back in its place on the mouth of the well because something would fall in the well and contaminate the well. Uh, mice would come in. Uh, birds might fall in. Rodents of a, whatever kind. A sheep even might fall in the well. So they kept the well covered to protect the well and protect the animals around it also. So morning and evening they would uh, uncover this well. And Jacob uh, came upon some uh, shepherds, some brothers. And Jacob said to them, My brothers, where are you from? And they said, We're from Haran. And he said to them, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said to them, Is it well with him? And they said, It is well, and behold, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. Now Rachel is a, um, a young girl. We know that Rebecca was at the well also, wasn't she? She was at the well. And she uh, watered all, gave uh, Eliezer a drink, and she gave all of his camels a drink and all of his livestock. Now here comes another young girl, probably 10 years old, maybe 11 years old, somewhere around there. And he said, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. Now, it's a custom back in this period of time to give people 
uh, a the lineage, your lineage, when you come up. Um, even among the American Indian people today, you come up and you'll say, I am of the tribe of Brule, uh, Brule Lakota, and I am of this family. I could say, I am of the tribe of uh, the Chickasaw Nation from the house of Moshokchu, also. And the Cherokee of the Badger tribe or the Bear tribe or whatever, the Turtle tribe. You, this is an ancient greeting. You say, I am so-and-so of so-and-so. I remember a long time ago, huh, it's only been about seven or eight years ago, I guess, we were up here in Fish Lake Valley and Maryland was doing laundry. And there were two twin girls there and Marilyn likes twins because she was a twin. And the two twin girls were there, and they were watching Marilyn. And uh, they asked her, what is your family, or where did you come from? Remember? Family name. They want to know your name. And she said, I'm, my name is Marilyn Phillips, I'm Jim Phillips' wife. And they said, oh, we know him, we know him. I was the tribal hunter for the Western Shoshone, so they knew mm -hmm. me. And that's what's going on here. This is a greeting and they're getting acquainted with who's who. Okay? Who's who? Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. And he said, Behold, it is still high day. It is not time for the livestock to be gathered to water the sheep and go and, and pasture them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered. And they roll the stone from the mouth of the well, then we will water the sheep. We can't do it. We're not strong enough to do it. Guess what? While he's still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. Now the word Rachel means ewe lamb, a little ewe lamb, a pretty little ewe lamb. That's what Rachel means. Oh. And it came about when... Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep and Laban, his mother's brother, and Jacob went up and rolled the stone from the mouth of the well. Now these guys are sitting back there, and here's this young man, a powerful man, and he goes up there, and alone he rolls that gigantic stone away from the mouth of the well himself. Can you sit back there, and they're saying, Ooh, did you see that? Did you see that? He's not afraid of Esau because he's not, he's not a weakling. So many people make Jacob a weakling. He's not a weakling. He's a powerful man. He was the breadwinner of his family. He was the one that protected the animals from the wolves and the lions and the jackals and the bears. And he went and rolled the stone to the mouth of the well and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And then Jacob kept on kissing Rachel. And he lifted up his voice and he wept. Now I'm giving you some of this from the original Hebrew language. And Jacob told Rachel that he was a relative of her father. And that he was Rebecca's son. And she ran and told her father. Now she just runs and takes them off back there. Leaves the sheep and all. This is quite a deal. A relative has come to visit. A close blood relative has come. This is my first cousin. So it came about when Laban heard the news of Jacob, his, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and kept on kissing him and brought him into his house. And they related to Laban all of these things. And Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him a month. A month. Now Jacob is a worker. He's not a playboy like his brother Esau out running around chasing women and, and shooting animals with his bow and, and so on and so forth. Walling around out there in the woods. Jacob was a breadwinner. And Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my relative, you should therefore serve me for nothing. 
tell me what your wages are. No, he's out there working, out there taking care of his sheep and his flocks, his, his camels, his goats, his cattle, whatever. For a whole month. And he hadn't lost one. There's no jackal, no lion, no bear, no wolf going to come and take Laban's sheep any longer. He's got a powerful man serving under him. Now Laban had two daughters, and the name of the older was Leah. But by the way, the word Leah means, um, it means weak. 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 W-E-A-K, weak. And it kind of means weak eyes. Weak eyes? Weak eyes. Now some people, she had silver eyes or weak eyes or something, but that's not what it really means that when she had such beautiful eyes, probably blue eyes, she had such beautiful eyes that when a man saw her, they became weak <laughs> in passion. <laughs> had two daughters, the name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was what? Lamb, little lamb. Little lambs, they died, you see. And Leah's eyes have made people weak. Literally. But Rachel was beautiful of form and face. Now, Rachel's eyes, or, or Leah's eyes, were, were beautiful, and they made men weak when they saw her eyes. But Rachel was beautiful in every way. Not only her eyes, but her whole form. Everything about her was beautiful. Leah had beautiful eyes, but Rachel had beautiful everything. in her form and in her appearance. Verse number 18 now. Now Jacob kept on loving Rachel. He loved her. He fell in love with her. So he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Seven years. That's a long time, then. Mm -hmm. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me and work for me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. Now, by the way, she's growing up. She's growing up. She's becoming more beautiful. She was probably 10 years old. Now maybe she's 16, maybe 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my time has completed, that I may go into her, that I may consummate our marriage. Then these days they would take a young girl, they would have a wedding feast, and she was all covered up with a veil and everything, and with the coins on her head and all of this, but they couldn't see her face. And they would take her and they would do her their dances and everything else. And the man would sit here and the woman would sit over there. And all of a sudden, at the end of the, the feast and everything, the father would take the girl to the man's tent and open the flap and throw her in there. <laughs> Into the tent and the man would walk in there and they would become man and wife. Now, they also would have a cloth that they would put under the woman when they were consummating the marriage because there must be blood on that cloth. She must be a virgin. Or the man did not have to say, I accept her. He had to prove she was a virgin. Then Jacob came to Laban and said, Give me my wife, my time is completed, that I might go into her. And Laban gathered all the men in the place and made a feast. Now it came about in the evening that he took his daughter Leah and brought her to him, and Jacob went into her. Here she is all covered up, she's got her veil on and everything, and Jacob's pretty loop-legged by now. He's, you know, they've been drinking a lot of wine. And he goes in there, and he lays down, and he consummates his marriage with Leah, but he doesn't know it's Leah. It's dark. He's in the tent. She's covered. And he has 
sexual relationships with her. Now it came about in the evening that he took his daughter Leah and brought her to him. And Jacob went into her, and Laban also gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah as a maid. Now he's going to give her a servant, a slave. Now we find out that this was going to be a uh, she's going to be his wife because her children. She's not just a concubine. She's a wife because her children are going to be heirs. They're going to be part of the twelve tribes of Israel. So it came about in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. It kept on being Leah there. And he said to Laban, what is this that you have done to me? What did you do to this? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? I haven't tried to trick you. I've done everything that I was supposed to do, and you've deceived me. But Laban said, it is not the practice in our place to, to marry off the younger before the, the older. This is the law of Kamarabi. He quotes the law of Kamarabi, which was an old law in the land. Now, Verse number 27, complete the bridal week with this one. A man and a woman feasted and made love for seven days. Solid. The man had to be with his wife and go with her and, and, and sexually unite with her for the whole week, every day. That was also the law and the custom of the land. And then we will give you the other also for the service which you have shall serve with me for another seven years. So it's going to be 14 years, and he's okay with that. So Jacob said so and completed his week with her, and he gave his daughter Rachel as his wife. Rachel became his wife. They feasted another day. Rachel's all covered with veils and coins and things with her dowry. And then he goes in there, and they go over to the tent, and uh, her father, Laban, pushes her in the tent. There she is. And Laban also gave his uh, maid Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as her maid. So Jacob went into Rachel also, and indeed he loved Rachel more than Leah. And he served with Laban for another seven years. Now the, saw, the Lord saw that Leah was unloved. He treated her less with love than he did Rachel. Leah wanted to be a wife. She wanted to be loved. And of course we have the God of the underdog always, don't we? God is the God of the underdog. He always picks up the lesser and makes it greater so many times. The law of the rejection of the firstborn, etc., now the Lord saw Leah was unloved, and he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived and bore a son and named him Reuben. Reuben means see a son. See a son. Reuben. See a son. For she said, because the Lord has seen my affliction, surely my, now my husband will love me. I've given him a son. Surely now Jacob will love me. Then she conceived again and bore a son, because the Lord had heard that I am unloved, and he has therefore given to me this son also, and she named him Simeon. And Simeon means that he hears. Simon and Simeon are the same word. Simeon means he hears, one who hears. And she conceived again and bore a son, and now this time my husband will become attached to me. 
because I have borne to him three sons. Therefore she named him Levi, which means a tethered or attached to. And she conceived again and bore a son, and this time I will praise the Lord. Therefore she named him Judah. Then she stopped bearing Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah through this son would the Messiah come. This is the son. Praise Jehovah. That's what his name means. Praise Jehovah. Here we have all the sons of Leah. And Rachel hasn't had a child yet. He hasn't had a child. Now he's in love with Rachel. And he somewhat tolerates Leah. But Leah, God, is blessing because through these sons, through the last son, Judah is going to be the Messiah of the born. And you can look to the last, very last chapters of the book of Genesis and you'll see Jacob blessing that son. He's a lion of the tribe of Judah, a lion's whelp. When he lies down, who will disturb him? That his sons will serve him, that his brothers will serve him, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Our Father, we send this message out. Father, I pray for those out there that might hear your word that don't know you, that they will come to, to realize that you can save them to the uttermost. Father, I talk to people daily, and, and they don't. many people don't understand your love. For you said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Father, in these messages, I, I want to, sh to show your love, your steadfastness. Father, please use it for your honor and glory. Please forgive me where I failed you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.